All right, today I want to go over some risk measures. <clears throat> Hopefully these are ones that you are familiar with, but I want to make sure you get the intuition behind it. When I think about risk, I don't really know how to measure that. And the way I'm going to describe it now is different from expectations. So the way I measure risk is not necessarily do I lose money or, or anything other than what's my difference from expectations. So here <coughs> are returns for a fictional stock A from April to August. Um, I get the average return. So just you know, sum those up and divide by what five of them. And that average return is going to be 0 0.0070. This, without any other information about the firm, is my expected return for the next month. So what I want to do to get the the variance is the number where I get for so my measure of risk is going to be called variance. To get that, I find my deviations. So what I mean by deviations is my deviations from expectations. So 0 0.2 minus 0 0.007. This would be negative 0 0.010 minus 0 0.007. And I'll quickly write these out. Um, just taking the individual return each time and subtracting the average return or the expected return 0 0.007. If I were to sum that up, what would that sum to? Well, that would sum to zero, and that's a useless number. And think about this. I have just as much above the average as I have below the average. and It's what average is. So to get a useful number, I need to make sure that this doesn't add a zero. There are two ways to do that. One is take the absolute value of the deviations, which it, some people do. Uh, the other is to square the deviations. So I want to square these deviations. So this would be, and I won't write all these numbers down, because I trust that you can square each one of them. Um, this would be minus 0 0.010. Ah, uh, that's wrong. 7 squared, and then the last one is 0 0.0080 squared. Now, to get the variance, and variance is going to be written as sigma squared, so make sure we have this terminology. The subscript A uh, refers to the asset, so lowercase sigma squared means a variance of asset A. And this is going to be the sum of the squared deviations. So you probably remember that term, but don't think about that much. Sum of the squared deviations divided by, and here's a choice. Some people do n minus 1. Some people do n. Um, we'll talk some in class perhaps about the details of why people do it different ways. But what we're going to do is just do divided by n because it's going to be close enough. I think it's a slightly easier way to do that. So <clears throat> what I need to do really here is take the average and that's going to give me the variance in this particular case is going to be equal to 0 0.003716. Most people talk about the standard deviation or the volatility. That's the term you hear the most. Volatility and standard deviation are the same thing. And that's represented really I have three because that's definitional. That's represented with sigma not squared uh, a. And this is going to be the square root of sigma squared a. And this is going to be equal to 0 0.06096. So this now is my measure of risk. Let me scroll this up just a little bit. We'll come back to it a little bit later. So <clears throat> what I have here is monthly data. I want to translate everything into annual data. So I want you to annualize every number, unless you're told differently, annualize every number that we have. So the annualized return for A, because it's monthly data, is equal to 12 times the monthly return, which is 0 .007, and that's going to be 8.40 percent. I would do all the calculations, by the way, in decimals and write stuff at the end in percent. I think that's the better way to present it. 
if I want to annualize this the variance I take uh, 12 because that's the number of months times the variance I'm going to write down here well, this is the annual variance and this would be the monthly variance so I'm just going to write down here monthly right so you just multiply it by 12 but to get this the standard deviation while you're taking the square root of both of these monthly so really to get the standard deviation of asset A on an annual basis you take 12 times the volatility I'm sorry not 12 the whole point of this was to tell you it was not 12 it was the square root of 12 times this, the uh, volatility which was 0 0.06096 that is equal to 21.12 percent and what you want to think about why this is important think about the normal distribution which should be perfectly symmetrical it's not there but you know remember from the normal you have the mean and then the mean plus standard deviation the mean minus standard deviation and so you know somewhere around 68% of the time you're plus or minus one standard devi deviation 95% um, of the time plus or minus two 99% of the time plus or minus three standard deviations so that's what we have for our measure of risk and the important thing for this measure of risk is it assumes that you have normal distributions which means there's just you know the, the curve is symmetrical All right, let me do one other thing here it's going to be slightly different um, I gotta go back here back to where we were and I'm going to take a second to get rid of some of this stuff let me pause it so I can get rid of some okay so <coughs> I've rewritten this I have the returns for stock A and the returns for stock B and we've already come up and figured out the annualized returns for stock A is equal to 8.40 percent and the standard deviation annualized for stock A is 21.12 percent now I want you to repeat on your own for stock B um, and see if you can get those numbers which crap I didn't write down hang on just a second all right so I didn't write them down but um, see if you can get on your own and I'll get you the answers at class the answers at my office my video equipment's at home so I left it up there by mistake so what we want to do next though is see how these stocks move together um, so actually the standard deviation B I did find it is um, 0 0.07277 times the square root of 12 whatever that number comes out to be that's the annualized volatility for stock B what I want to do next is find how these stocks move together so what I need to do here instead of having the deviation squared I have the deviation of A times the deviation of B so I'll look at stock A and I want to say well did stock A B its return and in April yeah it was 0 0.020 minus 0 0.007 so yeah it did more than expected and stock B it was down 5% it was expected to go down 0 0.0020 I know this is a negative return down here I chose that for a reason and it highlights the shortcomings of historical data I don't expect the return for any stock to be negative I'm assuming markets are efficient so if most people think that the this stock is going to go down in value they sell it and the price is set so that you always have a positive expected return so that's the flaw and we'll see it later on in the class with historical data is expected returns from historical data are very bad they usually I mean, it, it leaves a lot of information out but we're just going to go through the mechanics of it uh, without thinking about that finance intuition for right now so I take each one of these minus 0 0.10 minus 0 0.007 times 
these are both down 10 percent that's this is a negative and minus a negative so that should be a plus and minus a negative that should be a plus um, so each one of these I won't do them all but it's simply think about it this way you want to see do these two stocks move together relative to what they're expected to do and that movement together is going to be called the covariance and it's calculated exactly the same way as variance instead of doing the deviation square they do the deviation of one times the other which is mechanically the same thing so when I come through I get this number 0 0.00 the problem with the covariance measure is I don't really know what that means. Uh, if it's positive, I know the stocks move together. If it's negative, I know they move in opposite directions. And if it's zero, I know they're independent of each other. So I get 0 .003. It's positive they move together, but I don't know the magnitude. Do they move together perfectly? Do they move together to what degree? So that's where I come up with correlation. Correlation, that's a Greek letter rho of stock A and stock B is equal to the covariance of stock A and stock B divided by the variance of A, I mean, I'm sorry, the volatility of A or the standard deviation times the volatility of B, which in this case is going to be 0 .0030. And here, I don't care if you use the annualized or monthly, um, but since this is a monthly number, this point zero zero three is a monthly number. I need to have the monthly standard deviation. So make sure your time intervals match up. This is point zero six zero nine six times zero point zero seven two seven seven. This equals so correlation goes between negative one and positive one. So in this case, the correlation is 0.68, and it's a matter of degree. And I would say that's pretty highly correlated. All right, so that is standard deviation and correlation. Uh, what I want you to be able to do is just mechanically be able to do that. Um, and there's a spreadsheet online where you actually start with the stock price, and using the stock price, you calculate the returns. So once again, make sure you can fill in those blanks use Excel spreadsheet to do it. It's time consuming. Uh, we won't do the whole thing on an exam, but make sure you have that skill. My next video will be semivariance.